This is me. I'm a YouTuber. I'm also a therapist. That's not the best example. Here we go. I've been inspired to learn more about the history of beauty, more about the beauty therapist and the treatments of our past. So I travelled with a colleague of mine to the New Zealand and Australian Beauty Expos, where I interviewed a variety of respected and experienced people within the beauty industry. Making this documentary is a huge task, so I'm releasing parts of the documentary so that you can see it as we go. I'm hoping that together with your comments and your feedback, we can make a documentary on the past, the present and the future of beauty. This is part one, where I interview beauty industry experts and ask them for some advice for the new therapist, e.g. the postgraduate. Uh, although you finish your college, your learning has only just started. It, it, to me, you can get knowledge when you're at college, you can't get experience. So the experience they get from day dot in the industry for the next 20, 30 years, we still have our most senior therapists coming to our basic training each year because you're always getting something else. You'll retain a little bit more. And if you look on education, I think the stats of knowing that when you go to education, in the next week you'll retain 20% of that information. How many times do you need to go to that second nature? And I think the biggest thing is just keep learning. Yes, yeah. And I, I think, I said this again, I'm a very strong believer in this, if you don't enjoy what you're doing, find what you love doing and do more of that because um, that to me is the, it's a recipe for life, a great life. Yeah. Definitely starting out, my best piece of advice would be fake it till you make it and have practice and patience. You have to come across as being confident in what you do. If you're like, oh, yeah, I can put these nails on you. Yeah. Is it okay if I charge you $20? You know, then your clientele is gonna walk all over you from the beginning and it's gonna be difficult to assert yourself as a professional that they can count on. So it's really important to just be confident, even if on the inside you're trembling, just put yourself out there as confident. Practice, 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 and be patient. Success isn't overnight. Amazing nails don't happen overnight. You don't do your first brilliant haircut in school. You know? So really it comes down to patience and practice and having confidence always, even when you don't. <laughs> well, I used to say get as many reference books as you possibly can, even if you can't read them all. Um, Dr. Peter Pugliese probably has the very best books for estheticians. Peter is a brilliant older man now, he's almost 90. And he's written three books with estheticians in mind that's all about physiology, chemistry, and that. Everything you want to know about how the skin works that you can understand without a flood of Latin, you know, that you can understand. And you go, oh my God, that makes sense. Kind of like we teach. Know your stuff, know your skin, know your ingredients. Um, understand the underlying cause of the skin condition and, um, and really have confidence and faith in your ability to go out there and treat it. To um, be able to offer that service at, at exceptional benchmark customer service standard, to know your point of difference and to understand what you can do for that client um, that somebody else can't do checking in with the customer, ensuring that the treatments are working for them, ensuring that the treatments, if they're active like a number of them are today, that they know how to deal with that, but um, knowing your thing. And, and getting in tune with technology in so many ways, whether it be with the technology in the skincare or the technology with the modality or technology with business, with social media, um, your website being your shop front, just learn and never stop learning, never stop learning. I actually started, well I graduated in 1980, so a long, long, long time ago. So I have seen a lot of things um, transpire during my, my years of being in this industry. When I first graduated, I went out and bought myself a salon straight up. Biggest mistake I ever made in my life, because um, I, you, you, you think you know it, you're invincible and you think you know everything and you think you can change the world and it's simply not like that. So. You know, I lost my money um, with that and I started again and I started again doing it the right way so I was working for somebody. Um, not that you want to learn and make mistakes at, at other people's risks I guess, but you know, you, you, it's good to work with other people so you can actually find out 
ask questions and find out more information about things and, and have a guidance. Yeah, so someone that's been around for a while, they can actually say, well, you should be doing this or that way or whatever, so they can help, actually help you. You need to learn your craft. And so you need to find a salon that actually suits your needs rather than just go and get a job. Anybody can get a job, but people or students who come to me looking for work, they need to be interested in energy medicine. They need to be interested in expanding their skills because they've only learned their craft, they now have to actually perfect it. I actually encourage them to start their own business. Well, if they're going to start their own business, again, they do have to do their market research. They have to have their signature treatments. They have to make sure that um, if they're not budgeting, you know, the financial control, that is the most important thing because that is the actual glamour part of our industry. It's setting up a lovely atmosphere. If you can't set up that atmosphere, it needs to be inviting. So, but it can be done on a budget, and that is one of the things that we show our students. We actually show them how to set a business up on a budget. Um, because what can happen is you get so excited, you get so enthusiastic, before you know it, you've spent thousands of dollars on perhaps, say, reception desks, furniture, equipment, and it's not really necessary. You know, so there's all, all sorts of little, little things that we can actually help them with to make sure um, that they, they don't get into too much debt because it's hard work trying to earn that money back. Yeah, yeah it is. Absolutely. So you'll be very lucky if you get a personality mm. that can do it all, mm. um, love it all and work to the best of your capability. And unfortunately we're getting them and we're going bang, do it all. Yes, yeah. And that does not work for every personality. Being confident of what you know, the skills you have, never being afraid to ask because it's a, such a quick paced industry. You have to constantly learn, constantly move. So you're never going to know everything and there's no harm in that. Um, I, I would definitely recommend um, going to a makeup artistry school if she wants to further it as a career, not um, behind a counter because it's a completely different type of makeup as opposed to if you were going to do um, makeup for print or for screen, that sort of thing, um, then yeah, definitely makeup school. Um, having beautician backgrounds are really handy because they um, understand muscles and contour and shaving, that kind of thing. Um, but it's a completely different uh, type of makeup that you would use and t different techniques for different lighting and understand, you know, like, it's not just learning about makeup, it's learning about the camera and the, the red based camera or the green based camera and the lighting and there's so much more to learn and I think um, a lot of them don't realise just how much there is to learn so I think that and then also um, finding a good makeup artist and then just assisting them and assisting them forever and then hanging on for dear life, eh Lay? <laughs> Ride the coattails. You have to specialise and stick to your specialty area. The future is in these young people. Mm. Yeah. When I saw our new uh, Kiwi team, mm. we had a little awards cocktail party two yeah. nights ago and I had not known any of them. They're all young, fresh, and I relate to this better than anybody else now at my age because there's no agenda there. There's no nothing to unlearn. Yeah. They're like sponges. They're all bright, intelligent, yeah. and they're keen to know what's real and what's not real. They're not yeah. going to fall for the old buzzword, you know, type of marketing, which is still predominant in this industry, but fading away. But anyway, no, they are the future, definitely. Yeah.